Yo, what it is, y'all see it? Y'all see it? As I enter to the man cave, I want to say shout out to everybody that's here. I think I need to put that man cave sign somewhere behind me. Shout out to everybody that's here. What's going on? It is what it is. We have a man cave sessions. So, y'all see it? Uh, Jay Big Unk, Jay Fleming. Y'all see the ticker? Welcome to the man cave talk. Cash app for Uncle Jay Fleming. Dollar sign hard work 42. Dollar sign hard work 42. I'm going to let a couple, what's up, Justin? Long time don't see, love yourself, hey. I'm going to let a couple more people come in. But, hey, y'all go ahead and tell the folks that I'm live. Y'all go ahead and tell them that Dana J is here. What's up, Miss Dixon? EJ, Zay Zay, what's up? Y'all let them know what's going on. Uh, everybody speaking, everybody speaking, that's what's up. Hey, Miss Blue Blazers. Now, Taylor, what's going on? Hold on. I'm going to get the seat wet. My apologies for being late. I'm going to be honest. I was asleep a little bit. I took a little rest. Took a little rest. So I apologize. I was kind of tired. Y'all know. Y'all know what it is, man. It be like that sometimes. You get tired, man. And you got to get a little rest in. So, let me see. I'm at 19. Oh, no. Y'all need at least 30 more people in here. And before we even get started. So, y'all tell everybody that Dana's here. Share it out. Share it out. Share it out. Let's see. Let's get let's get some folks in. Here. Let's see, let's see. Let's get it in. I need thirty more folks. We're going to get it in. Yeah, sure. What up, Chris Dye? 22. All right, waiting for... Haven't been on the tube lately. Been working OT. Man, Justin, I, I know how it is, bro. What's going on? Hey, 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 what's good? Ain't nothing. Why, why am I doing like this? Hold on. Hold on. Can you hear me good? Yeah, perfect. 
Perfect. Can you hear me good? I can hear you. Can you hear me? Not. Evidently not. Everybody, everybody. What up, Bump? Hey, my apologies. <laughs> Grace and peace, man. man. man that, that was my part because I was asleep. My peace <laughs> and blessings be out of you. Yeah, you work it, dude, you better wake up. Man, but I had to shake it off. I was like, oh, we get up, we get up, we get up. I was like, that's when the Laser Dream Team was like, it's 7 o'clock and you got a thing with Big Hump. Oh, right. you need to be there. I was right. like, shit. Like, five more minutes. Five more minutes. Yeah. Give me five more minutes. Yeah. No, nah, but, you know, everybody here, or most everybody here. Okay. Um, I- I'm going to say this. Everybody that's supposed to be here is here. That's how I'm going to leave it. Um, if you see the bottom, I got your cash app up there going across the bottom. Um, it's a pretty much welcome to the man cave. Welcome to the man cave talk. Then it says cash app for Unc J Fleming. Dollar sign, hard work, 42. So, man, Angie Walk in the building. (laughs) Angie Walk in the building. Angie, you can't see nobody? (laughs) Low down, hey. Angie Walk will be sleepwalking. Angie Walk is like an attorney. (laughs) What it do, Willie? Okay, everybody following me. Low down. Hey. Love yourself. Hey. Chris Starry. Hey. Dream Team. What's up? Angie Walker. Can you see us now? That might be on your end. Angie might got to reset her page. Hey, can y'all see me and Uncle Jay out there? Hey, Brooke. There you go. Please like, share, subscribe. There you go. Oh, all right. So look, we here on the man gave y'all, and today's topic is protect your peace. I told y'all earlier, get y'all questions ready, because it's gonna come a time when y'all gonna need these questions. So the topic is protect your peace. Okay, let us see if we can see. What peace are you protecting? Are you protecting hey. your are you protecting your inner peace? Or oh, I'm gonna start off heavy today. Are you protecting your inner peace? Are you protecting your outer peace? Or are you just protecting peace, period? Well, I'm gonna let Uncle Jay take it away, but the top but the first question is what peace are you protecting? Let's deal with Inner peace first. No, 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 no. That's the heavy hitter. Let's deal with the outer peace of how people perceive you. What is your peace about how people perceive you? Go ahead up. <laughs> I'm just nephew, baby. <laughs> um, we start talking about protecting your peace. We even know about it in ours. Having someone take out your character when you're already in place, you're giving someone power, you're giving someone energy they don't deserve. Having someone take your money and turn it into two things, having your weekend destroy it when it was a beautiful one, and it just takes a couple of seconds for this person come into your world and dissect, disrupt, disrupt and dismantle your day. So protect your peace from me, inner or outer, but not to allow anyone at any time come in a place where I'm good here and I'm good here. So, so I've been in those places. Go ahead, speak on it. So what if you was cool with somebody, right? 
Mm-hmm. And y'all was cool. You know what I mean? You and your homies. Y'all, y'all cool. Y'all were homies. Um, but you took it like I protect these people. And these people stabbed you in the back. Mm-hmm. What 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 advice can you give people that been through that that's like I gotta get back at them because of what they've done? Even though the damage might have been damaging, but you're saying, Oh, I gotta get back. Or that person is saying, Oh, I gotta get back. What advice would you give them? Well, I'll speak for my person. And if anyone that's on here, remember when we talked about the growth of man, you have to go through something. There's no way for you to understand and see that anything that we do in this world that has something to deal with success. You have to have some type of struggle. You have to have some type of stress. You have to have some type of uh, uh, turmoil, or some type of pain, some type of suffering. You have to go through something in order to see the things that you need. Me, personally, back then when I didn't have any vision, when I didn't understand whether I was going left or right, I allowed other people to mental manipulate me and put me in places where I didn't belong, and I knew it. But because I was living in that negative lifestyle, none of that stuff mattered. But now, the advice that I would give a person, once I go ahead and reach and I surpass a person's mental, their personality and their demeanor, there's nothing they can do for me. I'm good. I did what I did for you from the heart. So now you did what you did for me from my so-called your heart. And if that's what your heart got for me, then we can no longer be friends or whatever you call me, your homie, your brother, your big guy, your OG, whatever it may be at the point in time. So I'm good. So pretty much is like you loved them from your heart, but they stabbed you in the back from their heart. So therefore, your hearts don't intertwine. Your hearts don't maneuver with one another. Well, and this is for anybody, everybody that's going on bond right now. No one's gonna love you like you love yourself. If that's what you're looking for, any type of relationship, you think they're lying to you. It's not happening. It's not going to happen. Nobody can love you the way that you love yourself. Because if that's what you're looking for, you're going to be disappointed. I love heart. If I'm telling somebody that I'm a brother, if I'm telling somebody that you listen, I love you, brother, I want to make sure you get home, I mean it. So that means when you get home, I need you to call me. Right. He ain't calling me. That's the, I know it takes me 20 minutes to get home. I'm on this line. I got to make sure you get home so I can be good on my vice versa. Brother, be a female for that. Wow. That's deep. That's deep. Hold on. Hold on. Is the echo bad, y'all? On my, on my end? Nah. Nah, but I'm about to see what's going on. Okay. Hold on, let me see something. Nah, nah, but I'm about to see what's going on. Okay. Hold on, let me see something. Nah, nah, but I'm about to see what's going on. Okay. Yeah, it's a little echo from your end. Uh, hold on, let me see if I can fix that. I had that problem before. I think I know what the issue is. I think I just need to put my condenser mic on this one. And I'll do that after the interview. But, hey, we're going to rock out with it. We winged it for two and a half hours, man. Right. Is the echo better? Say something, Monk. Is the echo better? Test, test, test. Okay. It says cool. All right. All right let's go. Cool. Okay, y'all here, Unk? Um? Y'all hear me out there? All right, good. They say yeah. All right. I took you a 50. Cool. So... So, and protecting your peace, right? And, like, 
And what you were saying, like, everybody ain't going to love you the way you love yourself. That's true. <laughs> but they can come damn near, but they can come damn near close if it's genuine, right? Well listen, the, the, people can only do what you allow. We want we want we no one wants to be missed. No one wants to be wrong. No one wants to say And the reality is if I you have to love self before you can love anyone else. These are facts. You have a lot of people in relationships that go into other relationships from a relationship that they never finish. Mentally, they never finish. That's what I'm telling you. You got to give a time out on this social media. That Facebook, that Instagram, give a couple of seconds to yourself. All day, every day, everybody that's on this social media right now, and I can guarantee they over five hours. Can't even give yourself 30 to 45 minutes. You got to love yourself. You got to love yourself. Can you hear me? Hear you perfect. Oh, okay. Good. That's deep. That was a real deep situation, what you just said. That's real deep. It's, um, and it's to the point where people nowadays have to do that. They have to love their self. But I understand a lot of people that's on these internets, they mm-hmm. don't they don't right. love their self. And it's like a lot of people put out certain things. But they put out certain things and they display certain behaviors. And because they want some type of reaction from you, and no matter whether it's good or positive. Listen, listen. On social media, you can be anybody. And we talked about that. I can I have to keep going back to the growth of man. And it can be the growth of woman at the same time. What I'm telling you is we are afraid to live. And what I mean by that, we're afraid to be ourselves. So we create images. And we want to be these other guys. Nobody goes by their government name. Don't call me my government name, which is Jerry. I was going by animal for a lot of years because I was living that life of an animal. Not no more. I'm a grown man. I became a grown man at 35 because I was still living a boyish life. Lying, deceitfulness, all this silliness. It's a joke. When you start growing up, that woman going to love you endlessly. When you start acting like a man, she's going to do things that you can't even imagine. When you start walking the path that you need to walk, man, she's going to hold your hand until she can't hold it no more. Now, that's to death do us part. Nobody wants to marry a liar. Nobody wants to marry a cheater. Nobody wants to marry a person who talks like they love me, but they do something opposite. There's people on here right now that tell people, yeah, I love you, but they know they're doing different. So you're lying to yourself. I'm telling you, I've been that guy. I don't have no cut card no more. I know what it feels like to lie to a person. I know what it feels like to tear somebody's soul completely apart. But when that tape was turned upside down, nobody wants to see that. Nobody wants to deal with that. The realities of life, man, is what it is. You cannot love nobody else until you love yourself. And we got to stop taking our past relationships into our quote-unquote future relationships. And you wonder why your future relationship can't be the future relationship because you ain't done with that past relationship. Why are you still communicating with an ex, man or woman on this line? Why? How are you protecting your peace and you still dealing with something that's behind you when you're supposed to be looking forward? Progress means forward. Digress means backwards. Come on. And we're going to talk. Let's be grown about it. Let's, Let's keep, keep it going. Sexy. Sexy. Keep going baby. So when you did a situation, I get it. I get it. But what about the people that say, yo, I just miss hanging out with them. I just miss seeing mm-hmm. them. Maybe it was me at that time. Let's let me see if I can go back and recreate. What about those folks? And again, um, I've been a lot of people. I've been a lot of places. And as they say, I wore a lot of hats. I've been a chameleon. So I've been in that position where I went back 
to the same people who hurt me, almost to a point where like, it's like an addiction. I did it repeatedly, over and over and over. Like I want this type of, I want this type of pain. I'm enjoying this type of negative love, quote unquote. I've done it. So my advice to a person is, you know, honestly, when you're in a good place and you're protecting your peace, there's no way in the world you can go back and deal with something like that. There's no way. Who wants to enjoy pain? Who loves that type of atmosphere? Who wakes up feeling great? And then when you get that phone call, I know it's a couple of us on here that go through it. You get a phone call from somebody and they're talking negative. But check this out. From here on, or however you want to do it, because I do it on a daily basis when I get it. I love people. I try to do the best I can to give people what they, they want and need. I'm not a therapist. I'm a life coach. That's what I like to call myself. I'm not a professional or nothing. I'm just telling you from my personal experience. Someone calls me and I'm in a great mood. Listen, beloved, I got to call you back. I don't feel like I have to explain anything to you at that time. Well, why are you calling me? I'm not doing none of that. I got to call you back. And if I call them back, I call them back. And if I call them back and they're still in that position, then the only thing I can do is advise them. Listen, I'm in a good place right now. You need to find yours. Okay, so what about the group of people? And I find myself in this class. What about the group of people that say, you know what? I ain't going back. Y'all did too much. I don't mm -hmm. want to speak to y'all. I wish y'all well, but I don't want nothing to do, 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 do with y'all. But then you have the so-called friends that'll be like, just go ahead and apologize to them. Even though they did you wrong, but the so-called folks want you to apologize to them when they did you wrong. No, I'm not. I'm just going to let it keep moving. But, 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 what, but what would you say to those folks? Oh, I mean, I don't, I don't. I don't surround myself with situations that I used to. So for my advice for those type of people that anybody who's dealing with friends that's not understanding your feelings, for lack of words, protecting your peace. And, and wants you to go back and have your peace, peace uh, destroyed, destroyed and put you back, you back in, in the negative, negative mindset. mindset. That's insane. That's insane. That's, insane. that's, that's not right. Friend. That's, that's a, a that's person, person who also enjoys that, that likes to hang around, you know, negativity. negativity. EJ said, that's the journey I'm on. But the thing is that I'm not interested in being in, in a relationship with anyone because I got to self-discipline myself to elevate myself to a higher high. Facts. Yeah. Yeah. You, you have to. Listen. listen. And, and that's the, the only way, way to success, success that he's, he's going to see. Has to love himself, and he knows already what he wants. So how can he not get to where he's going? Come on, that's awesome. Nikki M said, "Nikki M said, apologies are for you, not them." Yeah, we spoke about that before, right? And then she said, "So you can pro progress with your journey." Mm -hmm. I agree. I get it. So protecting your inner peace. <laughs> I think that's so important that people have to get to a place where no matter what's said about them, they don't respond. Because responding to negativity only breeds, oh, I got him. I can get him. I can dictate what he do. But when a person is talking about you 24-7 and you don't even know them, you 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 only had conversations via YouTube or conversations via phone um, and you never met them in person and they talk 24-7 to try to destroy you all because you walked away and they not used to nobody walking away from let's keep it real I learned from the best so I can turn it on and turn it off and I'm used I'm not used to lawn drawn out Breakups. No, if it's over, then fuck it. Go, go your way. I go my way. Have a nice day. I'm good. And if I ever tell you you're going to need me before I need you, consider it being totally over. Because when I go to that length, it's no coming back. 
How do you destroy something you don't understand? A person has to know and understand. That means they have to have a relationship with you. They have a relationship with you. You have to understand this person. Because we have to have conversation. We have to converse back and forth. When you meet people in the beginning of these relationships, we give, and let's be let's be clear, in relationships, we give her, or if she's speaking to us, they give us only what they think we deserve. Because it's fishing. That's all you're doing. You're getting to know a person. You're getting acquainted. Now, if you gave that individual all the tools to do damage to you, because I'm going to tell you, I don't care whether you're married or not. You got to always keep your guards up. You can't give everything. Even in marriage, you have to have some type of peace. They were talking about cell phones one time in my household, my kids. 16 and 18-year-old daughter talking to their little friends. The little boy think that he should be able to look in her phone whenever he wants. Why? That's not trust. It means you have trust issues so i didn't tell her she got to get rid of them that's something that she should have been checking at the very beginning if you ask the necessary questions let's be clear and i don't play with my babies you ask them what, what are you, you looking, looking for a platonic relationship, relationship? You're, you're looking, looking for a future, future wife, wife possibly with, with the, the big house the picket fence and the kids, kids? You're, you're just, just looking, looking for some guy goddamn sex. sex. Tell, Tell me exactly what it is that you're looking for. And, and when, when he sit up there and say, uh, well, goddamn it, that's your answer. If you continue to deal with him, it's your fault. When he starts smacking up your goddamn head, or he starts disrespecting you, or he's not giving you the thing you think you deserve as a woman. So as for checking the phone and that inner and that outer piece, love yourself first. And, and you'll, you'll be able to deal with people and things, things, things that you need to see before, before these people come to you. You'll, you'll see their personality, you'll see their meaning, you'll smell everything, you'll see everything you need and want. And, and you're going to be clean. And you're going to be okay mentally. And then you're going to be in a good place. Wow. That want and that need is always a problem for us. So we think we need, we don't need anything but love ourselves. Fact. That's what you need. You, you want to protect, protect your peace? Love, love yourself. You, you want to be in a good place, place Mickey? Love, love yourself. Fact. I hate it, wife. So, so it's easy, easy for me to do harm to people. Now, now you can't now tell me now nothing. Even when it's nighttime, it's sunny for me. I'm, I'm in a good place. place. I'm not allowing nobody to do these things that they've done to me before. That's a good way of looking at it. That's, That's how, how I live. live. But you may, but you, you know what? That's a good question, though. How do you destroy something that you don't understand? Okay. You can try all you want, but it gets deeper. Because how can you destroy something that the person that you're trying to destroy don't even understand? It's no. It's, it's like the ugliness that we deal with in this world. Okay? Right. You understand? You have another race hating you and they'll understand you. But they base it on hundreds of years of ignorance. <laughs> it's insanity. Right. EJ said, but my biggest struggle is contain myself and my own actions because that's what's holding me back to elevate Stop me. accepting it. And be, huh? Cut him right up. Stop accepting it. Okay. He already know what his is. Stop accepting you. I like this young fella because he always speaking and I can hear his anytime and every time you tell me about what he got going on. Right. Stop accepting these issues and concerns that you think are problems for you. They are nothing no more than just obstacles for you to go around or to go over. Or when your mental's in a good place, you go take your ass right through it. Nikki M said, if the bait is laid and you take it, 
you are giving them power over you. All the time. Hey, Miss Belinda. Hey, hey, everybody that I miss. Uh, she also said, it is never too late to reclaim your personal peace. Mm. That's a good thing. How do you reclaim your personal peace once it's given? Ah, you, you mean once you gave it away? Once you gave it away, how do you reclaim it back? Somebody dropped in on it. <laughs> once Nikki M said, it is never too late to reclaim your personal peace. My mind, you know how my mind go. So I said, okay, how do you reclaim your personal peace once you gave it away? Once you showed your vulnerable side as being a friend, and they showed their vulnerable side as being a snake, how do you reclaim it back? It's tough, man. Without hurting anybody. That's the underlying thing. And see, and that's what people don't understand. Once somebody is once somebody really give you that friendship card and they to the point where they rocking for you hard and then real people come and start and partaking and then you cutting them off because of your loyalty to that person. How do you reclaim all of your personal peace without man? Look, this is the man cave. How do you reclaim all your personal peace without hurting a motherfucker? Because people don't understand that when you go through that and you really physically hurt somebody, you're reclaiming everything you put out because you're looking at it like, I helped you. I protected you. And you did this. So you got to feel what I actually feel. And no matter how it play out, you got to feel what I feel. Let, Let me, me uh, try to answer that from off the table. And what, what I mean, I mean by, by that, where I'm at now, now where I was, I've been that person where I felt like I've gave every single thing. Because like you heard me before, I said I love hard and then you done wrong to me, which I felt like I was abandoned. And abandonment to me is like the ultimate in a relationship. When I feel abandoned, it's time for me to react. And I've done harm to people because I really didn't understand how to deal with that situation. When now, if people have done me in that way, I just got to walk away because I can do more harm to you not dealing with you, you understand me, than to actually deal with you. That's just me speaking. That's my that's my piece. That was deep. Toy Smith said, you cultivate the symptoms of your personal peace. Hmm. I'll let you address that because I don't know what she mean by that. Well, well have her explain it. Yeah, Toy, explain that. You cultivate the symptoms of your personal peace. What do you mean by that? Let's see what she say. Okay. Anybody, anybody else? Anybody, anybody else have questions? No. No. Where's Ann Huff? I ain't see Ann today. Nikki M said, "You determine what you need for your own peace." Whoa. Mm -hmm. Okay. So how do you? So how do you? De how do you determine it? Nikki M. And Toy said, be guided by some wisdom from the Apostle Paul. The mind controlled by the spirit is life and peace. Romans 8, 6. So, Toy, well, so, what, so what are the people who don't read the Bible? There we go. <laughs> what about the people who say the Bible ain't nothing but a fallacy made by a white man? Hmm. Then she said, we well, then she said, focus on what you can control. Yeah, absolutely. I like it. Hey, PG. Hey, join in, PG. That's what we're here for. 
Miss Blue Blazers said, do some soul searching. But check it, Miss Blue Blazers. What if your soul searching came to a point and you hit a roadblock where I don't want to search my soul. I just want to beat the soul out of, out of somebody, but that did me wrong. It's so easy to say, go to the Bible. But what if we ain't Bible literate? Nikki M said, for me personally, not allowing negativity in my life and what Toy just said. That's true. It's easy to say it. It's easy to say it. But you're going to get hit with some sort of negativity. And what I'm saying is, what if a person don't know how to, or let's go here, since we're adults. What if a person is not mature enough to not let neg negativity come in? How can they cope with it? Because, you know, that's a number one factor for a person killing themselves because when negativity hit and they can't control it and they can't get it out the way they want to, it becomes stress. And when overwhelm. and when stress over and right, and when stress overwhelm you, you see people like, you know what, fuck this, I'm out. Boom. Or they go hang themselves. Because nobody understands them. And when they lash out, it's oh, they being and malicious. No, we're not. Y'all the reason that made us Damn, malicious. <laughs> that part. That's what it is. Nikki said at the end of at at the end of the at the end of the beating, Dana, the soul out of someone is a temporary satisfaction. That's, That's true. true. It, it is, it is, is Dana. Dana. Yes, yes, it, it is. is. Yes, yes, it is. Because, because I've I've, I've <laughs> listen, I'm, I'm not gonna, gonna go as deep as I could on it. But after, after really Laying hands, and I'm talking biblical way to people after I felt they jumped wrong for a fraction of a second. I felt bad because I felt like, oh, I did what I did, but they didn't deserve it. They didn't deserve it that bad. You know what I'm saying? Like, I did a little too much, but in reality, what I gave them was entities of the issues that I was given. So I'm going to say this, and, and let's go for you, huh? How can you say that a per well, well, I understand how. And because your human side kicks in after a while, I'm be like, damn, yo, you ain't do it like that. But let's keep it facts. When you got that much anger about somebody and towards somebody, I don't, what if, what if a human side don't kick in and just say, damn, they deserve that or shit, I ain't give them enough. Then what? Then you'll be in the place where I came. And Toy Smith was like, know what's, in, know what's important in life. Don't get caught up in chasing after superficial goals such as materialism, wealth, and success. Well. Mm. When you, when, Toy, when you saying that part, Know what's important in life. Okay. You know what's important in life. But when somebody that you broke bread with stab you in your back, you don't care about what's important in life. The only thing you care about... I think about, this question... Pardon me. I think, I think this, this question, question might be guided to people actually have those... Because, because if you haven't had, had those experiences, experiences you get, you're going to be to me, and I'm, and sorry, sorry, I'm sorry, sorry not to offend them, if you have it, Hey, answer is going, going to be pretty, pretty premature. premature, right? You, you know, for lack of words, it's like you, you have had that experience. So, to actually, judge, judge that statement is kind of, it's kind of, yeah, yeah. Toy so Smith, somebody like, actually, who's actually not, not saying that the person has it, that now they're in a good place to make the statement that they're making, then that's, that's okay. okay. But for me, I, I personally. I couldn't see it. I couldn't see anything but red. I couldn't see anything. The only thing I got to do today is they've done something to me. I got to make them feel what I'm feeling and But now I'm in a place where I don't ground up type of energy, period. Which makes my life a lot more peaceful. And now I can see things that I need. You're on that side, that piece. 
stolen from you, um, and that's a horrible, horrible way to live. You can't see love. You don't understand love. Nothing makes sense. That's why you see these young guys walking around looking upset, deranged, frustrated. They got a lot of thousands going on. They got all neck. Right. Toy Smith and a piece and out of pieces. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Toy Smith said, Dana, if you empower people, if you empower people to rob you of your inner peace and joy, they will. And you will become chained to the walls of their control from which you will never be. But people are deceitful. So you don't always see. Like I said before, people are chameleons. I've been the guy. Tell you, I think what he's trying to say or speak or whoever that was that's making that um, statement. So it's the thing female. is, people don't come the way you think they come. What's that thing you say to keep them more clothed or whatever? Right. Yes. They let you see what they want you to see. Then you're in the position where, okay, you feel good. You understand? This is nice. I'm okay with it. And you even gave them everything that you got. So they didn't rob you. You didn't give them any goddamn thing because you didn't know. To rob me, man, you got to you gotta run down on me, champ. You got to give it to me wrong, brother. You hear me? Right. I got to know that you're going to take something out of my pocket or lay me down. But for me to smile at your face, you smile back and we sit down at the table, we break bread, we take trips on the plane, we rap on the bus, we sit out there for I got relationships. That's not me letting you rob me. That's me thinking I got a relationship. I understand you, let you understand me. But then you do me wrong. Yeah. That's when we got an issue. I'm going to hurt you. That Right. That That's when that dark man unknown come out. And and that's one of the things that DMX was talking about in his last interview. Like, like as a kid, he didn't know how to deal with displacement. That's another topic. Ooh, that's going to be deep. You, you know, know why? 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 He had personal that he didn't feel he jumped. Are your phone going in and out? Huh? Okay, I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm about to get a satellite. <laughs> <laughs> How we good? We good? Yeah, we good. I'm here, champ. Talk to me. Yeah, so what was you saying? Oh, you said because he didn't what? No, I was saying that he had underlying issues as a youth. I mean, he had a whole lot going on. Going in and out of group homes, going in and out of groups, being molested. They had a whole lot of issues going on. Right. He didn't have no real friends around him. It just seemed like... you seen the interview. They actually said there was... Anytime he goes in there and lay down, no one is supposed to wake him up. If you wake him up, he wants to fight and, you know, throw shit at him. Right. So it's like, other than the Rough Riders, it wasn't nobody really there to help him. You know what? They, quote unquote, was protecting that bag. They were worried about not going on the floor. They was worried about not getting in the videos, not going on the plane lines, and one of the hunters, quote unquote. That's not a friend. And see, and that remind me of a lot of, you know, industry dudes. I mean, and you look at DMX. Then you look at Black Rob. Then you look at Humpty. Let's talk about the main. Let's talk about Rob. I mean, you see what they're going through. Every last one of them went through a dark moment. And it's like, they all went through dark moments of who can I trust? Well, it, it gets me in a year and I both know around in that industry. You got these young guys coming 
Mm-hmm. If you mm-hmm. never dealt with serious paper form, it will destroy you. Right. Endless. Right. You don't have any honest individuals around you. Instead of being the yes men, you gonna have an issue. And it's unfortunate these issues are gonna be detrimental to your health. You look at you got every last one of those artists that you mentioned, all of them such as type of heavy alcohol, heavy type of drugs, the fornication, all of these things, man, instead of having a little home extended it's the same way. You are now in the public. You understand? Right. You no longer that guy to be quote unquote that you are worth nobody. Now you are quote unquote a somebody. So act like it. Let's do this thing right now. Yeah. Dear Max, can a piece and out of peace is that destroyed. You go back and listen to any of his music, message in every last one of them. Yeah. He's, He's been telling the story a long time. The boy's been broke. Yeah. But those clowns still stuck in the album. That's how I feel. Look at Black Rob when he brought Woe out. It, it was a message in Woe. Man, listen. I did security for Bob two years ago. Handball. When he came to the hotel for the Regroup and talk about what doors to cover and how he wanted to scare the guy in front on the side. I, I was just made, looking at him like this brother's skin was horrible. It doesn't even look like that. Rob. I thought it was somebody totally different. Wow. He looked bad. But again, you're talking about this industry that's wicked, man. It's all wicked business. If you don't understand, you know, it's stay the hell away from it. But I don't want to get off topic. I want to stay where we at. Right. Nikki M said, I can meet someone through my hubby, and something in my spirit is like, nope. He will say, you need to give them a chance. And down the line, they snake his ass. And I just give him the told you so look. Well, stop giving them the look. And then you guys are really getting a better relationship. Not saying that your relationship is bad. But when you two get to a point where you both will see that person naked. You know, they got those sayings now that the snake's no longer slithering through the grass. They stand up tall and walk with legs and say, what's happening, bro? What's up, sis? They're the new snakes. Right. When y'all get on that same page, you ain't got to tell him no more. He going to see what you see. Wow. Miss Blue Blazer said, you have to think long term, not just in the moment. Because if somebody do you wrong, don't go after them without thinking first. Don't do and think after the fact. That never have a good ending. Let it go. I understand, but I'll tell you about my thing. And here, there we go. I don't, I can't look long term. I have to get my day. You know, because I person three times face to death that I couldn't see it tomorrow. So my every day is my every day. My Mondays is my Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursdays, and Friday. I try to get it all in that one day. I try to get 25 out of 24 hours. Wow. I'm not trying to be rude and, and take what you're saying misconstrued. I'm just saying I can't look for a future. I have to deal with my todays. Nikki. Because my future is just promised this. I, I, I don't. I'm in a better place, but I've done things to people that I can't sit and walk in a mall today. And if I see somebody's family that I've done body harm to, I can't expect for that person to forgive me because I'm already in a forgiving state. Right. So I can't look for that harm, Jeffrey. I can't look for that future. And I can't be mad if somebody do that type of harm back to me. Nikki M said, emotional responses can be damaging. Very much so. 
Mm-hmm. So let's talk about it. Um, when you forgave yourself, you forgave that person, but you already done punished them, and you see them in the open, and they give you reactions that you're not used to, like they'll see you and go the other way, or they'll run, or they'll try to do harm to you. How do you curve that to let them know that you, you're not on that type of time no more? I think, I think from what I'm getting that from the young ladies that commenting is again talking about growing up. The growth of a man and the growth of a woman. It's trying to exit out of the negativity in the life. The only way they say you can move forward, you gotta go here. That that thing because if you continue to hold on to it, it's going to bow. That's when we're dealing with that mental illness. Anxieties and depressions. Okay. You know, that makes sense. That makes sense. And, okay, so for a person that's saying, let it go, here's my question What are the steps to letting it go? I don't, I mean, I know someone wants to respond, but you're looking for steps. I, I guess it's, you have to just accept the person foremost if you're looking for steps. But there you go. Accept what has already taken place. And then for yourself, you have to say, listen, in order for me to make moves, in order for me to get past this, this is what these young ladies know. I got to just be done with this person. I mean, if you want to continue to deal with them, then I guess that's the forgiving part of it. Um, you still dealing with the power and what they had already done to you. But that's I'm not abuse. saying people can't change when they do what they've done to you. I'm not saying that. But when somebody has scarred you in such a way, it's extremely hard to try to give that person something that you gave already It puts you in a place where you don't ever want to be again. So the trust issues you will have, most definitely. My Here's my philosophy of it. If I can't trust you, I don't want to be around you. So if I know I'm not going to trust you coming in the door, I'm not going to put myself through that anxiety and stress. No. Mm-hmm. You already showed me who you are. And I don't care about you changing or not. You changed for you. That exit that you changed, that was for you, not for me. I'm not going to deal with you. And that's what helps me along the way. That's what helped my anger issues along the way because I feel like if I give you another chance and you stab me in my back again, it ain't nothing nobody can tell me. Because when I see you, I feel like I need to rip your head off. And because not only was I a fool once, but I was a fool twice and you did the same thing twice. And I you keep know. telling people, I'm not Martin Luther King. I ain't turning it up a cheek. I'm going to spin around and turn to Malcolm X and put my foot in your ass. Sometimes, Dave, a person that does the hurting, you hear people say this all the time, that's because they get hurt and they don't know how to deal with certain situations other than just hurting people. And it's like an epidemic for them. It's a disease. It's something that they're so used to that they don't even know and see that they're doing it all the time, consistent, in such a way that it bombarded them and put them in a place where they love to live. They live in it. They come. It makes sense to them. Toy Smith said, first and foremost, you have to create physical distance. Hmm. So, Toy, what if you never had distance? I mean, what, what, what if you never been in that person's f- space physically? And what if you have been in a person's space physically? It's easier to cut somebody off that you never been in their company of versus somebody but that you used to rock with every day. Just like vice versa, it's easier to reach out and touch somebody that been in your company every day versus somebody that you never seen personally. 
Hey, just for me. Um, Ann Huff said, letting go for me is being done altogether. Even if you change, that's good for you. But for me, I can't no longer trust it. So she said the same thing you're saying. Right. Well, I mean, it's, it's you guys' prerogative. I'm just telling you, if you listen to me, I actually speak from experience. Right. I told you, I've done wrong so long that I thought wrong was right. And I truly, honestly believe that the things that were wrong, that I know or wrong, I thought they were right. Because that's what made sense to me. That's the only thing that I've been around. It's the only thing that I understood. So hurting people, I was okay with it. I was congratulated with it. I paid from it. I grew up behind. My apologies, guys. I'm here to train. That's a shout out. Big old shout out. <laughs> So Tori Smith said, just because they're not here in physical form doesn't mean that person isn't physical on your heart. Huh? Oh, in your heart. Mm. I'm a different type dude. I grew up in a concrete jungle called the Projects. Lafayette. So... When I'm done with you, you ain't in my heart. It it just turned my heart black and it made me like angry. Like I'm gonna tell you what it feel like. It felt like a bunch of physical force pent up in me that I don't I I just gotta get it out. And it don't seem right getting it out no other way than to get it out on a person that hurt me. That's what it seemed like. Now, I never said that was the right idea, but all my life, that's all I know. So if that's all you know all your, your life, and when you try to do something different, and it hurts you even more because it's something new and you ain't used to it, how do you cope with that toy? And these are conversations that I think Family should have in that household. If we have these type of conversations, there's certain shit that go on in the streets that wouldn't be going on. Like you wouldn't hear about people killing seven year old babies because they're gonna think, "What about my baby? What about my mom? What about my sister? What about my brother? What about my siblings?" They're gonna think. Brooke said, "Ah, oh, once you know yourself." And what you are willing to tolerate and not tolerate, then you'll be able to focus more with tolerating others. Brooke, what if I don't want to tolerate nothing from nobody else? Or what if a person really just saying, I hate tolerating other people's bullshit? Or let's keep it real because you're from back home, Brooke. What about the people that say, if you send me another representative, I'm going to slap the shit out you. Send me who you are. Then what? Toy Smith said, emotional ties goes a long way, Dana. You can be angry, hold grudges. The love in your heart outwork that. Are you going to jump in this, huh? Do you understand what he's saying? No. He's basically saying, you remember when I was telling you, uh, I forgot who the young lady I was, I was saying, basically. Love yourself. If anger can overcompensate the love that you say you had for me, you never loved me. Oh. But what if they did you wrong? See, I'm hearing you. And you you speak on some personal issues. So just spin it out with some you can deal with that because a lot of people won't have some wrong stuff to them. A lot of people getting wrong stuff to them. It's how we get past the fact that they did what they did. So what do I do now? How do I deal with this? This is a person that I love. This is a person that I call. This is a person that I broke in. 
what do I do now? Do I want to continue to deal with this person and have and think in the back of my head that they potentially may do me wrong again? Or am I going to give them a second chance and say, okay, cool. All right, let me try this. But the minute I think your motherfucker is going to try something, I'm going to break his fucking neck. Why? I want to deal with that instead of taking that shit to the face. Me personally, right now, where I'm at, I've got to talk to you straight to the head. I'm not trying to think. That's too much for me. I need to find out right now. We'll be we'll be but what if there's no conversation? Those okay, days are over. Then I got to think about it a different way. My different way would be this. I would hate like to keep my distance. And then when we get together, we're going to break bread. We got to take this to the table. I can't see it. Literally. So Brooke says. I gotta, huh? I got to get close to you. So Brooke says, still to this day. I still sometimes struggle with putting myself first, especially knowing that I have children and a husband. That's deep. Brooke. And again, I have not a doctor, psychologist. Yeah, that's above my pay grade. Putting yourself first, still having issues with that. What what is the issue almost? Because that's the that's the loving yourself part. So how are you to love the baby and that husband you Come on, sweetie, you got tell me what it is. And Huff said, All I can say if you're really sorry about what you've done, even if you apologize and the other person doesn't accept, I feel you did your part. And that's all you can do. Move on. I agree. I've done that. I agree. I've done it. Because, I mean, how many times can I apologize and you don't want to accept the apology? And I'm in a place right now where I'm truly, honestly apologetic to the situation that I've placed upon you. And you don't want to accept it. But at least I broke my PC. Right. EJ said, majority of these people who on that are used to not breaking the cycle from the productive, from the product of the environment. Makes sense. You just you just talked about a whole lot of issues, entities that you would throw in front of projects. Yep. You speaking about you? I can say for a lot, I was. Okay. Miss Blue Blazer said, "You can forgive them." But you don't have to forget and then let it go. It don't hurt to apologize. You have you have to forgive in order to be totally free of your mind, body, and soul. Then you can move on. I don't think folks is getting the questions that I mean the well, let's see. Brooke said, then bro, that is all up to you. And what you're willing to tolerate. You get it. You get it if I'm not willing to tolerate BS from anyone. I'm going to tolerate it if I'm up if I'm up to tolerate it. Hmm. Then and then Brooke said, once you know, once you know you, then you can know what the tolerate. And I can give you a prime example. Okay. Miss Shirley said to me, wanting revenge is what steal your peace. Ooh. Hey, Miss Shirley, how? Wanting revenge is a human trait. Yeah, but it's still stealing your peace because you allow. That negative entity to overtake you, but you should have already surpassed that. And once again, do we get on that quote from that? Look, you did what you did. I'm just not going to deal with And Brooke said, Because of me caring for you, as if you are like my biological brother, I tolerate a lot from you. <laughs> because I know you have a good heart, and I know you would do the same for me. Therefore, Installer ate it. <laughs> and you know who that is. That's Brooke. 
Um, EJ said, growing up in my teen days, we went through the product of our environment, full of the real life stuff we see every day in the news. That's true. All of us have, EJ. Um, let's see. He said, like, for example, Robert Yummy San Sanderford out of Chicago. I don't know who that is. Hey, Candy. I don't know who that is. Uh, Ann said, you can apologize all day. But when you are angry and that keeps being a topic, then you never forgave that person in the beginning. That's true. I agree. Hey, Teddy Beauty. Hey, Candy World. Well, first of all, I totally agree. Forgiveness. If it's not genuine, it's not a forgiveness. So, so let me ask you this. Who, who is it to determine a genuine forgiveness? I mean, because I can forgive you. I can forgive you, but I can still want to break your damn face. And that's not genuine. See, for, listen. Who's that to say that? To, to, to you. I'm t it's you, the person, the individual. You're dealing with a lot of personal issues, but you can't sit and have anger and forgiveness at the same time. That does not work. I will be angry as hell, but I'm gonna come over here and forgive you. But I, and I'm supposed to be the one to believe that you forgive me and use it. All right, man, I'll forgive you. It's cool. Let's shake hands. Oh no, I ain't gonna shake That's hands. Like, mm. no, hold up, hold up. When we grew up, you remember we can sit, we can scrap, beat the hell out of each other, and you got these two old men come over. Oh, right, y'all shake hands now. When you gonna shake his hand without them telling you? That? No, that's not genuine. They had to make y'all do that. Candy World said, "Oh, I totally agree with you." Huh? Okay, I see where you're going with that. Candy World said, "I had an episode of seeking forgiveness over the weekend, and it didn't go well. I spilled my little heart out too." Wow. Okay. Let's deal with that. Let's talk. About that. So, so Candy, so what happened? If you want to call in, let me know. Brooke, if you want to call in, let me know. Ann Huff said, a real forgiveness will no longer make you explode. See, we're talking genuine. You're not ready to accept it because you're in a different place. But that's what I'm telling you. You cannot give a genuine forgiveness if it's not from the heart. It does not make sense. If you are angry, you can't forgive somebody. Ms. Shirley said, you eat and sleep revenge because of the hurt that was done to you. Wanting revenge can cause you to keep refueling your hurt. Wow. That's deep. So basically, me want, and I'm going to use me, a person that's been done wrong, they can refill the hurt because they want to get their hands on a person that did them wrong? That's deep. So, okay, let's deal with it. How do you get that? revenge cycle out of your life and you can't say just let it go because it's not that easy for everybody <laughs> from the boom you asked that break <laughs> <laughs> let us pray <laughs> dear lord i'm angry <laughs> you know i'm coming to you right now <laughs> boy, Jesus, <laughs> man i know x up there laughing right now like this nigga is crazy <laughs> Don't use my don't use my prayer for that baby boy. <laughs> I I can just hear him now. You got some skittles down there. You eat some skittles. You let it go and keep going. <laughs> you go get a remote control car and you take the anger out on the car. You just drive it until you can't drive it no more. You understand? <laughs> don't play with me. Then you be like, damn, Max. Brothers aggression. 
<laughs> right. <laughs> Nikki M said, "You have to figure. You have to figure what is driving that emotion of revenge. Work on that. Ooh, I like that. Ooh, that's deep. Yeah. You have to figure what is driving that emotion of revenge. Work on that. and work on. So and and that's Damn. great." Because work trying to figure out exactly what it is, and then find out what it is, and then you work on what it is. Oh man, that's awesome! I like that. Dang. Okay. Y'all crushing the day with these comments. Y'all got me thinking like I'm in the wrong place for a minute. Uh, I mean, y'all got me wanting to go to the altar. Let us pray. <laughs> <laughs> Lord, I've been broken in life. <laughs> EJ said, I'm good on revenge because it's not in my forte to carry on hurt that long. Wow. That's what's up, EJ. And Huff said, you have to separate yourself. Dana, anger will still be there as long as you make that anger a priority. As long as you allow it to manifest. So how you, you are the creator of hate. You are the creator of anger. You are the creator of frustration. That's what you gotta understand. Any and everybody that's going on right now, we are the creators of anxiety, depression. We allow if you allow it, if you let it be, if you feed it, it's gonna tear you apart. Love you back, Nick. Yeah. I'm telling you, we create it all. So, so for somebody to just get online twenty four seven and talk about one person that they never met, it seems stalkerish and idiotic to me. The person with personal issues. Okay, that's it. Candy World said, "I would call in, but I'm working too." Okay, I'm so glad you had this conversation because I didn't know how to accept it. But, but hey, life goes on. I was super genuine and sincere too. Whoa, Teddy this Beauty. Teddy the, Beauty uh, said, "Hey, Uncle Jay, huh?" Hey, what's, what's up, B? Candy World hit it on the head. She said, "I would call in, but I'm working too. I'm so glad you had this conversation because I didn't know how to accept it. But hey, life goes on. I was super genuine and sincere too, Unc." You hit me and said, God dealing with me. Mm-hmm. And that person is right there. Mm-hmm. Wow. And then, hold on, let me see, because I don't want to skip nobody. Angie said, I tried everything to get up in here. Seems like <laughs> seems like a thought-provoking conversation. Yes, Angie. Oh, you want the link? I bring you in. Oh, you want the link? Candy's World said, I believe it too. I came to the conclusion the individual I was asking forgiveness for is facing serious underlying issues. Who stays, who stays, and then she said, who stays mad two years? Question mark, question mark, question mark. Crazy. Let's take the question marks off. Don't put no exclamation on it. Just get that black line and draw a line right through his ass. Be done with it. Because two years of anger is a frustrated a person. Is this, this, that's not underlying. That's a person that just will not and will not and cannot be seen. Understand. He's blind. I believe that. I, I'm telling you from experience. It's dangerous. What are the, what are the dangers of it? Because she's saying that she tried to, and she said she pulled her heart out, and she asked for forgiveness. Evidently, she did something wrong, but, but that's not the issue. Well, 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 you said this is the man cave. So got it. Are you breaking up, Bump? You breaking up, Bump? 
Okay. He'll be back. These are some good, thoughtful uh, words of encouragement and questions. And you never know. I will call you later. Then. Oh, cool. Candy, anytime you need me, hit me. Anytime you need me, hit me. It is, but you don't have to keep listening. Block them. I get it, Ann. You skipped my comment. No, I didn't. I, Brooke, I read your comment. I will call you later, Dana, and I'll tell you. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Angie said, Dana's my boy. He knew it was me. He laughed all laugh. <laughs> Sure, if you want to come up, of course. I don't understand. Okay, Google, it's not for you to understand. I'm not talking to you. I'm in a man cave. How can I help? Okay, Google, not right now. Thank you. Nikki M said, who stays mad? People that lack the tools on how to forgive. That's true. That's so true. Candy World said, laugh out loud. I wash my hands with it too. Thanks for confirmation, y'all. No problem. That's what we're here for. That's what the man cave is about. It's about building. It's about building. I think this connection might have went bad. Let's see. My main man at Willie. Hey, Angie. Yes, yeah, nigga. Yeah. Okay. Sorry if I miss anyone entering the chat. Hello, all. Uh, hey, my man, we'll go to Jones. EJ, nah, we as a people face all kind of problems. The issue is who's going to listen. That's, that's key right there, Candy World. That's so key. I'm not famous. Lick Dixon. A lot of times people think you're mad. Because you don't speak anymore. But after a while, you tend to be unbothered because you have moved on. Facts. 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 Hey, Nene B. Facts. And a man cave, I understand it's not for everybody. Everybody is not able to handle these type of conversations. Nikki M said... Exactly, and when you move on and stop giving the situation energy, the people with the issues will look silly because it is just them participating. Facts. How long y'all been here? Nini B, we've been here for a while. Um, For one hour and 19 minutes. Mm. I don't know. You don't get a notification. Um, unsubscribe and subscribe back so that way you can get a full notification. YouTube be tripping. But but this is like this every Tuesday and Thursday. Man cave conversations. And we talk about issues in life. And we talking about Stuff that people having hard times getting through. I put my situation up there today because I, I, I just ain't understand certain stuff. I ain't going to lie to you. 
I don't understand how a, a woman can hate you, but she sit on her platform and it's all about you. Um, a lady old enough to be your mama, but she want a whole different type of ideologies because you don't believe the same thing that you, but the same thing that she believe in. I just don't get it. To me, that's stalkerish tendencies, and I don't and I don't like stuff like that. That's scary to me. When when I never had a FaceTime conversation or a phone conversation with you, other than when you called in my channel that one time, but you got nine thousand videos about me. That's weird. It's kind of weird. Then you proclaim to be for R. Kelly as the fight that we're in. And the next thing you say is, if R. Kelly can get prayer, so can Don Russell. I'll never forget that. And I'll just walk away from that situation because I'm not the one that's caring about people that's hurting my friends. I'm not a caring person when it comes to that. Because technically, I would say, who cares about a prayer for him? That's what he got himself into. If it wasn't for Robert, we wouldn't have known a lot of each other. So people just got to be careful about who's fighting for who. Plain and simple, you just got to be careful. Everybody ain't your partner. Everybody ain't your friend. And I'm going to keep it a book. Everybody that come and watch you, it's not for you. They might just be for the information. Or they might just be just to start stuff. You never know. A person that's for you will reveal their self to be for you. You will know if they're for you or not. But look, I'm going to be honest with you. What time is it? It's 9 9? We've been on now for like an hour and 23 minutes. So is there any more questions that anybody has out here in the man cave today? Do anybody have any more questions? And said, it's one thing to have a difference of opinion. But when you're on 24-7 and the topic is all about one person, it's stalkerish and crazy. I totally agree. No, that's my man's in there. <laughs> so hey, and what my man is doing, that's what we doing. <laughs> My pop, you know, my pop, yeah. I'm in a storm that ain't crazy yet. Man, it's a storm coming this way, too. Um, <laughs> yeah, mine, mine ain't around. <laughs> I'm talking about the damn cicadas. Oh, are they coming out? Man, they here, Jack. How y'all shut down the city, and then when y'all open up the city, and the cicadas like, okay, let's go eat. <laughs> hey, listen, perfect time to keep the monkeys in the house right because ain't nobody coming out with them things around what i missed talk to you what happened um and we, we were just talking about different things and um and and i was talking about how people just stalk you just to have commentary online and, and different stuff and and huff said it's one thing to have a difference of opinion but when you on 24 7 and the topic is all about one person it's stalkerish and crazy. I only can try to. Well, I speak on issues that I'm well versed in, and I'm not on social media, so I can't relate. <laughs> Brooke says, "So a tree by my house, a, a thousand cicadas on the ground." 
Mm-hmm. So don't don't birds come and eat those things? Birds. birds. People eat them too, right? I've seen I've seen tropical <laughs> potatoes. It's supposed to be protein. All right, Brooke, that's cool. I'll be off in 15 minutes. So, um, as far as growth and development with men and women, what would be a good pet peeve or a good thing to do to keep your peace as your peace and positive peace? Beyond. That's easy. Be honest. You know one of the, one of the most dangerous things you can do is to lie to yourself? Wow. That's crazy. But believe it or not, people do it every single day. Because they try to become confused and put themselves in situations that they know they shouldn't be in. They're trying to be somebody they know they can't be. And they're doing things they know they shouldn't be. Wow. Again, I've been that guy. You know, when a man can honestly sit down with a woman and say, I've been cheating on you since day one. I've been lying, cheatful, the balance is just whether you want to believe it or not. I didn't love myself, so I never honestly can possibly love you. And I truly honestly apologize to you right now because I know that what I'm saying to you hurts you. But I can't live like this no more. That's deep. That's my life. And the hard part is accepting the fact that that person might walk away for good. Yeah. But they did. But when they walk away for good, they will always have that understanding that at least he told the truth. Listen, I um, I told my ex-wife. I wasn't the same person. Mentally, physically, I was different in here. I didn't really love when I went in. When I came home, I was filled with all kinds of negativity. I had to learn how to deal. So me trying to say, I love you. I can't wait for you to get home. And I was saying shit I was on TV. Wow. Chameleon. Horrible, man. I was horrible. And Huff said... Wow. And Huff said, be honest and watch what you allow in your spirit. Well, as long as you've been honest, it's going to be okay. Nikki M said, when you get angry, ask yourself why why are you? If writing it down helps, write it down. You may find you you may find you are angry at yourself and how you reacted. Take it as a self-teaching moment. Pause for a second. I need y'all to and I'm dead serious. Pardon me to care. No, man cave, man. Just hit me. Again, we are the creator. We manifest negativity, frustration, anger, all the above the topics that we're speaking of. If it's negative, we create that. The same way we create the beauty and the happiness and love, the relationship, the things that we want. We create it. We are the creators of our destiny. We are the creators of the tomorrows, the todays, the next weeks. We create it. So how are we to be stuck in certain situations where we created it? We ought to have the answers and the tools to it. Facts. See, before I told you I had no vision, I couldn't see any of this. Why? Because I said what? I lived wrong for so long that I thought wrong was right. 
And it made sense to me. So the things that you do right don't mean shit to me because it's wrong. So what I'm doing makes sense. Shit you're doing ain't logical. It's illogical. So let's stop creating these entities that we don't want in our life and create the ones that we're ready to receive. We don't have to worry about the tools because if you're the creator, that means we manifest and we put this thing in. We built this building. We know what tools we're on board here. Facts. That's my life. Facts. What's I don't know what just happened, but... And on that note... I'm going to be honest. On that note... We can end tonight's man cave on that note because you hit it on the head. Oh, we got questions. Wait a minute. Wait. And Huff said, no, we got statements. I'm sorry. And Huff said, that's why we have to pick and choose our battles. Not everything deserves a response. Fact. Hey, LeBron. Facts. Oh, uh, give me that again. And said, that's why. We have to pick and choose our battles. Not everything deserves a response. I understand that. And I get it. But, you know, sometimes what I've been hearing, it sounds like it's clicked so many people say it frequently. Like the stick of gum from out of the pack of Wrigley's pyramids. You know, I'm not trying to be rude to her at all. I hope she don't take this some kind of way. But... I guess I, I, who I, I'm going to speak from is from my personal experiences. That's what I tell you. Um, I'm going to just let it go. I mean, rip it up. That's what we're here for. Rip it. No, I don't want to tell I'm going to leave it alone. Uh, so do anybody have any more questions? And before we end it tonight... Because Thursday, we'll be back at 6 o'clock. Let's see if anybody has any more questions. Okay. And Huff said, I'm speaking. Let's see. And Huff said, I'm speaking on what I've learned. It wasn't overnight, but I moved a little different. Hold on. Hold on, hold on. And Huff said, I'm speaking on what I've learned. It wasn't overnight, but I move a little different now. Talk about that. Right back. Yeah. yeah. So, so what happened is, is, is just, just like me, you know, 17 and a half years, two weeks, three days, and I'm a 36 joint. So, you know, going into a penal system, you know, I've been going in and out of the system all my life. But the problem is, you know, I no longer want to continue to do those type of things. I finally start seeing how everyone else is there. I got to move it. I can't do the things that I used to do. I don't even think of what I used to do anymore. I don't hang with those people I used to hang with before. So things have to be different in order for me to believe and want and receive the things that I need in my life in order for me to be the person that I want to be. And that's why I'm talking about we are the creators of our own habit. We are the creators of our own family. No one can make you do anything if you do not allow. So pretty much it goes back to when you protect your peace. Your peace Always goes back. Your peace protects you. You have to put these two things to protect. Why? Because we creators of our own happiness, our own sadness. Nobody can do anything to you if you don't allow it. The bullies only going to bully you because you ain't doing a goddamn thing about it. Right. That's it. And and Huff said. Exactly, Uncle Jay. You're right. It has to be some kind of growth. You got this. 
Without growth and discipline, you're in purgatory. You're just idle. Now, what woman or what man wants to deal with that person when there's no hope? You're not doing anything. In fact, listen, we talked about this before. If you're doing the same thing that you did last year, I can't have you around. That's facts. There's no progress. So, how, listen, a drunk hangs with a drunk. The alcoholic, uh, no, I'm sorry, the drunk hangs with the drunks. The dope things hang with the dope things. The rich hang with the rich, and the poor going to be what? They're going to be around the poor. They're going to be around the poor. No. You think that a dope thing is going to be able to hang with a rich? No, that's not happening. Not at all. Not at all. So, why would I want to be around something that has no growth? When my whole process, my mindset, my mentality is to have what? I gotta be prosperous. I gotta do better than what I did last year. Makes sense. Two 15 year old cousin at the time, I said, What's your New Year's resolution? He said to be better and do better than what I did last year. I had, I, what could I say? Wow. We want a lot of things out of life. And we got to be realistic about the things that we're asking for, just like when y'all start praying. I just started learning how to pray. I explained to y'all before, I hate the situation that I was dealing with as a youth. So I hate it all. So now I've learned to hold it. <laughs> you understand? Taking my life again, because I already tried. I'm telling you, people, we create our own. We got to stop allowing people to the places in our life and don't belong, taking our joy, flipping over our mentalities, getting us upset, stealing our joy, messing up our weekends, messing up our days, frustrating our weekends. Don't do it more. Stop it. Stop allowing these people to be in your world when they're already missing. Let them be. Now, that's a cliche that makes it. Misery loves company. Those are real facts. Right. But I don't want no problem. I'm good. Right. You got something online? Mm. You see your face, chat. <laughs> oh, no, I'm doing <laughs> And said, my dad used to tell me, if you want to see change, hang with the people you strive to be like. Love, love I'm, sorry. I'm sorry, somebody was trying to call in. I'm sorry. What and said what? And said, my dad used to tell me, if you want to see change, hang with the people you strive to be like. And what is that? You understand me? We right. We just dealt with it. The rich, you want to be rich? You got to hang around with people. But you know rich people ain't going to hang around a person that's going to look like you're rich or think they're rich. See, right. we already rich in the heart. We already rich within. You got social media. You got the internet. You watch television. You got a house and somebody living in a hut. Right. You got running water. They got to go out in the well. Come on. We've been rich. Right. Quote, unquote, we living in the land of the milk and honey. We have so many great opportunities. So many resources to put us in those positions. That's why when that young brother was talking about certain uh, uh, avenues that he was trying to strive for, that's why I tell him, stop that, man. Stop throwing that to Go around it. Go around it. Go over it. Go through it. Whatever you got to do. Love Yourself said, exactly, Ann. When I was younger, I used to fight all the time. Now I just mm -hmm. ignore ignorance, block callers, and stick up my middle finger at you. <laughs> you ain't got to do that. <laughs> you ain't got to do it. See, when you were fighting them, you felt as though you had to prove something to them. You wasn't letting nobody chop. Right. Been that guy. You whipping their asses. And it's just, you going to whip somebody else's ass. You whip somebody else's ass. And now you looked at like they know you were past. But at the same time, look, look the damage you're doing for yourself. Beautiful face. And come on. Hell with them clowns.
Right. You ain't got to do nothing to move about. You ain't going to stick your chest out. When your chest already stuck out, without them saying Right. Um, who else? Nikki M said, and my grandmother told me the same. Why be around someone you cannot, why be around someone who cannot, why be around someone you cannot aspire to be like? That's true. Mm -hmm. That's true. I like that. But it has to be more of that, Dagna. You know what I'm saying? So that's why you, the young brother was talking about you're a product of your environment. You know it made sense to me. Hmm? I seen drug dealer. I seen the night cars. I see how they just doing it, how they just getting it. Man, damn school. What I'm gonna go to school for when I can rock and rip like that? He got girls, he got money, he got clothes, he got jewels. I want that. But what I didn't look for was the price to pay for that. Right. You see? So, so once, once again, no matter whether it's good, bad, or indifferent, in order to be successful on a negative aspect or a positive aspect, there has to be some type of turmoil, there has to be some type of struggle, there has to be some type of pain involved. I agree. Yeah, that's what my life is. I totally agree. Life works. I'm just trying to help somebody be totally agree. Um, EJ said it. It's reasons why I clean my closet out. In other words, friendless and replace them with a mentor. Wow. Mm. Okay, that's deep. But well, hey, hey, what is he doing? Protecting his peace. Yep, he protecting his peace. Yes. So he found the tools. So you don't. <laughs> when you get tired of that pain, that physical and that mental pain. Man, you okay, bro. Nothing to do with that. Good. Right. I get it. But I tell you, I'm sitting here in a hundred and ten thousand dollar car, and the first thing a friend of mine, I thought he was a friend of mine, and I'm just telling you straight up, you know who he is. He said, "Boy, you running the streets again? Aren't you too old for that?" Hmm. No, no, not not no, no, not that I could have done it with my credit. So he's still stuck in the eighties, and that's how I see. So some people are not going to allow us to change people. Some people see what they want to see, and that perception of us is never going to be what we want. That's why I said what I said. We have to love us first, and we can't go no further and deal with nobody, whether it's a friend. A home girl, a home guy, a home, a, a husband, whatever, a wife. You gotta love self first. Wow. Now, 25, 30 years ago, I'd have put him down. Now, I dismiss him. We got, got any calls. We, we got, got any issues. They don't got to sign up. My kids are calling me. All right. I was supposed, supposed to bring that Kentucky Fried Chicken. <laughs> right. The chicken cold and shit. <laughs> look, look. If y'all want, look, if y'all like the commentary today and y'all like what's going on and y'all want the man cave to continue, go go ahead and hit Big Unk, Big Unk J Fleming Cash App. At dollar sign, hard work 42. Many people has been texting me like, Dana, what's on Cash App? I, I ain't know it. Now I know it. It's hard work, H-A-R-D-W-O-R-K-4-2. That's dollar sign, H-A-R-D-W-O-R-K-4-2. Y'all go ahead, drop them, a little something, whatever it is. Whatever you feel like it is deserving of worthy information. But remember, we ain't doctors. We ain't psychologists. We just Please. giving you what we've been through. And we trying to help everybody else go through their daily life. That's simple as that. We ain't putting no guns. Huh? 
No, no, no. no, no. Go, go ahead. ahead. I'll, I'll, I'll spin off and you come on. And we ain't putting no gun in y'all hands like, oh, we charging y'all for this. No, no. Just if you feel as though the content is worthy, you can hit the cash app for him. Y'all know if y'all decide that y'all want to look out for me, y'all can. If not, y'all know I don't care. But, hey, let's that's it, Brooke. Let's support our own. The cash app is dollar sign hard work 42. Let's support our own kings and queens. This is how we do it. So what you about to say, up? Well, you know, for me, Hogan oh, Mahone's giving me another shout out. Who? Okay. Uh, okay. Nah, the train coming here. Oh. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, this coming back. All right. So, as I say all the way, please understand that if anyone was offended by anything that I said, I truly apologize. I'm only speaking from personal issues and situations that I've experienced myself. So I mean no harm at any time. I have no ill will intent to bring anybody any harm. I like to consider myself a life coach. I've had some horrible life experience that I think that I can give to people to use as tools to not go through or deal with certain things that I have dealt with. Because now I'm at a better place than I was 25 years ago. And I'm thankful for you guys to allow me to come on and speak candidly as I've been, because that's the only way that I know how to be. I thank you so much, and I'm looking forward to talking to you guys again. And let's be good with each other, man. Godspeed. All right. So, look, Nick, Nick M said, no offense, great job. We appreciate the knowledge. Thank you, Nikki. Appreciate your sister. Uh, Ann Huff said, we love truth and facts from your perspective, from your protective. Uncle Jay, you are Thank appreciated. You. Thank you so yeah. much. Everybody, it's all good. Look at Willie. It's all good. <laughs> it's all good. So, look, we, we, we about to leave here and go over to Brooks channel. I will be coming back tonight. To speak on some of the stuff that I was supposed to speak on earlier before I took that cat nap. Y'all know I took that nap. I'm up. I'm ready to go. I'm energized. Also, we're going to be uh, doing a fundraiser for for Brooke over here tomorrow morning. Tomorrow morning at 11. is going to be no topics. Well, but, but yeah, I'm going to have some topics. But Brooke Cash App going to be flying. And we trying to help her accomplish to get her computer. Okay. All right. Um, we love you, man. We up, we up out of here. I love every last one of y'all. Everybody go to Brooks Channel now at HTTPS semicolon Same backslash thing. backslash U2 Y-O-U-T-U dot B-E backslash T-S O capital Z lowercase I Dash C T capital B D I. I see y'all there. That's all you gotta do is hit the link. That's all y'all gotta do. All right, um, peace, peace, bro. Love every last one of y'all. We going over to Brooks channel. That's how we doing positivity over here. Nothing more, nothing less. Let's keep it going. One. <laughs> I'm gonna be it